All right, here we go. Day A, strength and conditioning program. You asked for pistol stuff, push-up stuff, out of the gate with these two patterns. So we're going to go back and forth between a push-up variation and a squat, single leg squat variation. So let's talk about the push-up variation first. It's going to be a deficit push-up. So it's going to be a big full range of motion push-up. And we're going to load it by adding or taking away body weight. So adding or taking away band, adding or taking away uh, plates or weights to the push-up. The push-up and the split squat are both going to be in a window of range of uh, repetitions. So you're going to have 3 to 11 reps every time you do one of these exercises, but you do not have to have the same number. So it's really as many as you can do with high quality. If you can't get to 3, then you need to find an easier variation. If you can go beyond 11, they need to find a harder variation for your next set. It's going to be in a block of time, which will be somewhere between 12 to 17 minutes, depending on the week. So it's really just going to be accumulating multiple sets of practice. And every set you do will probably be a different number, and that's okay because that's kind of the point. So the push-up being in this 3 to 11 rep range, if I get down there and I do my first set at 10, I'm like, that was super hard, right? I rest, and then I do my legs, and then I come back to the push-up. On my next set, I can barely do eight. Great. doesn't really matter. I'm just going to keep going, and it's getting until I get to the point where if I get back down to three, and I need to make it easier, I can do that too. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and give you a um, what the deficit push-up looks like and some kind of things to look for and feel for when you're doing it and then show you how to make it easier and harder between that three to 11 repetitions. So you're gonna have two kettlebells. These two kettlebells can be, um, this would be the, the smallest kettlebell I would use because they're the lightest. So 12 kilo or up, the bigger the bell, the, de the bigger the deficit, but also the more stable they are. You can put your hands on the handles. They can be rain, like train tracks or they can be a little bit angled depending what feels best on your shoulders and your, and your elbows, okay? So, the push-up is going to start nice and tall, feet nice and wide on my toes. My shoulder blades are away from themselves, elbows locked. I'm going to start lowering myself, lowering until my shoulder blades are together. I feel a deep stretch. My hands aren't touching my ribs, and my elbows aren't touching my ribs. I squeeze my glutes and abs, and I press back out to the top. Okay? And that's one repetition. So I would have done as many as I could. And if I could have got to 11, that means that when I come back to this, my next round, I need to add a weight or a band to the back so I can make that harder. I can also change the speed. So if I go nice and slow and controlled, it's harder, right? And that's a good thing. Um, so I'm going to do 3 to 11. Now, ask yourself, well, what if I can't quite do 3? How would I be in this position to do three? So we're going to use a band as assistance inside the rack. So I have a band set up um, somewhere around, it'll be probably like knee to hip height. doesn't really matter. Obviously, the higher it is and the thicker the band, the more assistance is at the bottom. But somewhere around mid-leg will be good enough for almost everybody. Don't be too particular about where that is. You don't need to make adjustments in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step over the rack. I can start with my feet against the wall, and I can set myself up. I can set myself on the band anywhere on my legs or my waist. It doesn't matter if the band touches rib, belly button, hips, thighs. Anywhere in this range is good for the band to support your body weight. Remember, it's not doing the work of holding your plank. It's just unloading the weight on your hands. So it'll look more like this. Big stretch, shoulder blades together, locked out. Big stretch, shoulder blades together. I'm not dumping. My shoulder blades are staying nice and back and tall. And I'm pressing back out. 
So if I use like a blue band and I can't quite get three repetitions, obviously I just add more band by adding another blue band or going to a green band or a combination of bands. Whatever combination of the bands helps me get in between that three to 11 rep range, then that's the same bands I want to keep. So say I find a set of bands that I can do uh, eight repetitions on, I'll keep that amount of bands. And then every round, if my repetition gets lower and lower and lower, no big deal. Okay? Because it's kind of the point is this natural descending ladder work with the push-ups is the goal because we're trying to get to near failure. Unlike a muscle program, a muscle program may want to take to failure to get that muscle to kind of like respond in that metabolic way. But in the strength way, we want to practice the quality of the range of motion and of the pattern, which means that I do never, I never want to fail a rep. I never want to get halfway up and have to bail. I always want to be able to finish the rep full range of motion and think, okay, that was an eight or a nine out of 10 difficult. I'm going to stop there and be good with it. So think about always having one to two reps in the tank so that every round feels strong and you're always finishing with a strong repetition. Now, once I finish whatever number that is, I'm going to triple that with band pull aparts. So the band pull apart, I'm going to grab any band, doesn't matter what it is, um, red, blue, green, not an orange band. And let's just say that I just did um, seven push-ups, right? If I did seven push-ups, I am now going to do 21. I'm going to times it times three band pull aparts. So the band's going to be out ahead of me, pull across, does not touch my chest, and I come back in. I'm basically working the opposite muscles, all of these good, strong, healthy shoulder muscles of that push-up, so I keep myself in a good balance. So this is exactly what it would look like in my cadence, right? I'm going to do the push-up, whatever upset is. I'm going to grab my band pull apart, triple it. So if I did seven, I'm now going to do 21 band and pull aparts. And then I'm going to immediately go into creating a stretch in that muscle to increase its range of motion. So I'm going to do a door frame stretch for about whatever repetitions I did on my push-ups of that many breaths. So that'll look like finding any rack or door frame, right? And you can use the door frames, like actual door frames or racks. And I'm gonna hold this for seven reps, for seven seconds. So I'm just gonna stretch. I'm just gonna breathe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's my one block. So this is kind of like a super set of Push up, band pull apart, stretch. I'm gonna rest a good 60 seconds. I'm gonna move on to my lower body movement. So that's one block, right? One superset inside of my um, two patterns. The two patterns, right? The next exercise is gonna be the ATG, right? Split squat. Unlike the split squat we we're doing in the last program, the goal of this is big range of motion. One, for the health of our knees and our ankles and our hips. Uh, two, because it is a very close, um, it's in the same family as a range of motion that's required for your pistol. I'm going to show you the on-ground version, body weight, and then I'm going to show you how to make it harder or more difficult. So you're going to be in a nice big lunge, longer, the lunge is, needs to be farther than you think. Okay. I also don't want to be on a tightrope. I want to be on train tracks. And what I'm going to think about is that my back leg, step one, I lock my back knee. Step two, I put my rib on top of my hip. Now, as I lower, I'm going to send my forward knee over my toe, which is going to descend my upper body. So the goal is not to fall forward, right? The goal is to push my knee forward. See, I'm getting stuck. I need more range of motion. So lock the rear knee and then push the forward knee all the way until my hamstring touches my calf. My back leg is off the ground but straight, but I am tall. I'm not arching and I'm not falling forward. My shoulders are over my hips and I come right back up to my starting position. Very difficult. Okay. I'll show you from the front, from the other side. Super big lunge, pause, lock the rear knee, 
kneecap over the third toe, staying tall, hamstring to calf, rear leg straight, standing back up. That is difficult. So how do I make this easier? Two parts. The higher up the forward leg, the easier the range of motion is, okay? So I can either stand on something to, to de-load the pattern. So now this is an easier load on my legs, okay? So if I can't quite get to three on the ground, right, then I can bring my forward leg up to make it so I can get past three. Now, what happens if I can't go down? I can't get my hamstring to touch my calf. I'm just stuck right here. There's no more motion. I need to push my knee forward, and I may or may not have the ankle mobility. And that's where wedges and plates will come in handy. So I can put the forward foot on a wedge. This is basically acts as a heel. And now when I go down, I can put my hamstring on my calf. Now let's say I need a combination of that. So maybe I need it, I need the range of motion and I need it to be a little bit easier. That could be on a box, big lunge. Remember the setup is rear leg locked, nice and tall, hamstring to calf, knee over third toe, coming back into my stopping position. So it's gonna be mirrored to each leg. So. Um, I would like, let's just say that, you know, just like we have like our strong pressing left, pressing right, we always have one leg that works just a little bit different than the other leg. You have a strong and stronger leg. I would always start with your stronger and then match that. So if one leg is super confident and I'm like, oh yeah, that's my strong leg. I can do everything with it. And the other one's not as strong. I'm going to start with that leg. I'm going to match repetitions. So if I do seven on this leg, but I could do nine on this one, I'm still only gonna do seven. And that's gonna be my match, okay? The push-up number and the split squat number can be completely different. They don't have to be the same. If you want them to be the same for your own like sanity, then that's a good goal. You can try to match them together, but not a big deal, okay? These numbers can stay consistent round after round after round, or they can descend or ascend, just depending on how you're feeling. Um, doesn't matter as long as I'm between the three to 11 every time. Now let's say I get to 11, no big deal. I can add load, I can add weights, right? Um, so that I can get to a hard three to 11 repetitions. Pretty hard by 11 reps if you're doing it right and staying nice and tall, you're not going fast and that rear leg stays locked. If you've ever said, man, my hips, this is the best hip mobility you can do because it's a loaded stretch as you're descending down into that split squat. And then really focusing on getting hamstring to calf and knee over toe on those split squats. So that's the two patterns we're going to go back and forth with. Do my push-up variation, and then I'm going to do my split squat. Just like the chest press has a stretch, right? We're going to do a hip stretch at the same time. So we're kind of like layering in some mobility with our strength at the same time. And all we're going to do is we're going to hang out in the 90-90 right after. So I do my seven, I do my seven, I'm going to immediately, I'm going to grab seven seconds in a 90-90 stretch. Breathe, 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 and then I'll flip-flop. Seven seconds in my 90-90 stretch, okay? And that's my second block. So I have a chest press band pull apart stretch, rest 60 seconds, leg, leg, 90-90, rest 60 seconds. I'm gonna go back and forth between those until the instructor tells me to stop. That's the first big section of day A. There's no, um, there's not two different tracks. There's just a rep range that you can kind of like sit inside for your ability. So you can go as heavy or as light as you want to for that three to 11 reps. Then we're all gonna break and we're gonna move into the next four patterns, which are gonna be some accessories. We're gonna have clamshells, face pulls, some dragon flags, variation, some core, and then a little bit of big opening mobility again, kind of seeing how we're layering in that mobility with the patterns and inside the same set. So clamshells are going to be, you're gonna set up knee on knee, heel on heel. And if you can see, my heel is in line with my hip, in line with my shoulder here, right? I'm not setting up for my clamshell with my knees, my feet behind me. They're in line, knees are head. 
I'm going to go to my forearm. Before I start the exercise, I'm bringing my shoulder blades together, big, proud, long, open Superman chest. I'm going to push my top knee and my hip up towards the ceiling, keeping my heels together. So up and up, and then down and down, up, down, up, down. Nice, good, big pause, one 1,000 before I come back down so I'm not just speeding through. I'm going to do more reps than you want, which is going to be about 15 reps per side for my clamshells. Um, if you need to load that, you're not going slow enough and you're not squeezing the muscles hard enough. There's no need that you should need extra load unless you're rushing or going fast or trying to use momentum. And momentum makes muscles weak. Okay? I'm going to do face pulls, cable face pulls. We do these all the time. You'll never not do them because they're good for your shoulders. Real basic, you're going to grab two green bands. You're going to put your hands through the bands. I'm not holding my fingers. And this is my in range. So elbows higher than shoulders, thumbs behind ears. Come back, thumbs are ahead of my forearm, my forehead, right? And then I come back up. Hands behind my head, elbows up high, and then back forward. And you'll do that by the same high rep 15. Dragon flags. This will not be the full dragon flag skill progression. This is just going to be one of the progressions for this pattern. You're going to use the rack, and that's going to be something to hold on to. So I will be on my back. If you have any discomfort ever in your lower back when you're doing this exercise, the goal is to keep your lower back on the ground the entire time. If you do not have any kind of back tension or pain ever, really, you can play around with making this bigger, but it's not required. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the rack so that I give myself an anchor. I'm nice and stretched out across my ribs and my lats, and I'm just going to bring my knees up hips off the ground, and then I'm just going to press out to where I can control, and then back down. Press out to where I can control, and back down. My belt line is not on the ground, okay, for that variation. I can press my lower back in, press my belt line in, and then just slowly lower my legs without letting my lower back coming off the ground. That's another great progression where I can make it as big as possible by bringing it in, Hips off the ground, legs off the ground. Okay, so that's one. That's the hardest variation. Hips off the ground a little bit, and then hips on the ground, full leg press, pressing your lower back into the ground. Any one of those three variations will work. Whatever you feel the most abs with. If you feel anything but abs, then we need to make a modification to make it um, more appropriate. And that's, again, super high repetitions, 15 reps, and I just did like three, and my abs are already on fire. And then mobility is going to be wild thing. It's like a bridgy, yoga, twisty, hip lifty, reachy thing. That's the technical term. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to get into, like if this is tall set of the get up, I just bring knees together. Okay, and just like if I would be in a hip lift in the get up, I'm going to bring hip lift up. And then I'm going to search with my hand and my hip at the same time, trying to go back and over. And then I can explore wherever I want to from that position. And then come back down, back to my tall set of my get up, match my legs, hinge, and then explore. And then come back down. Okay? You can just do whatever feels good. It could be a couple repetitions or a whole bunch of repetitions, but you're just getting that shoulder nice and big, just like the get up. If my hand is facing forward, if I go to hip lift and I get caught to find range of motion on my shoulder, I rotate the pit of my elbow away so that I'm externally rotated and I'm not dumping internally rotated inside of my hip lift, inside of my big bridgey thing. And that's the four things we'll do. High repetitions, you'll keep going through rounds of that in any order. 
30 to 60 seconds of rest between each pattern until the session's over.